right before us we are having a diagram this is a diagram this is a sphere and this sphere is in a jar or call it a very long cylinder that is having some thick fluid now when we drop this ball down so that it starts flowing into this liquid it's definitely going to if it is a uh, um, water if this was water this ball will just fall through with ease if this was probably glue a jar full of glue and then you drop this ball in now of course it's going to take some long time before it reaches the bottom now this glue for example if this was glue this ball would have difficulty going through that glue up to the bottom because this glue is thick the thickness of that glue is as a result of what we call viscosity we discussed this in our previous sessions that viscosity is simply the resistance to motion within fluids now this is a body that is flowing through this viscous fluid and anybody that is flowing through a viscous fluid will experience a, a, a kind of retarding force or a resistive force because of the viscosity of the fluid now that viscous force that retarding force is what we are calling the viscous drag this viscous force that is experienced as a result of the viscosity of the fluid is what we are calling the viscous drag and this viscous drag in other words we can say is the force that opposes motion of objects that are dropping through the fluid so right here we have another diagram that illustrates it better we have a solid sphere here and probably it's having a force it's moving in that direction with a certain force f but we are having a viscous fluid with all these layers in the opposite direction so it means that as this force is propelling this solid sphere through this fluid uh, this this solid sphere experiences what we call a viscous drag now this viscous drag depends on some factors now some of the factors that affect this viscous drag we have of course what causes that drag the resistance to motion we have a coefficient of viscosity um, it's a factor in the magnitude of the viscous drag we also have the size of the body or if this body of course if the body is small the amount of resistance that will be experienced by a small body will not be the same as the amount of resistance that will be experienced by a, a big body so meaning if we're talking about a solid sphere in this case we'll be talking about the radius of the sphere the radius of the sphere will influence how much resistance it will face as a body then also we have what we call uh, the, the velocity of the body through the viscous fluid of course if the, the 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 body is thrust with a very high force or with a very low force as it's going through that viscous fluid the velocity with which that body is being thrown or it is going through that viscous fluid will affect the viscous drag and this is what we want to experiment in today's video we need to look at those parameters now those three parameters that i've talked about that affect the viscous drag which are the coefficient of viscosity the size of the body that is flowing through the viscous fluid and the velocity of the body is what is the basis for what we call Stokes law combine those factors we will say that force is directly the viscous force or the viscous drag is directly proportional to the coefficient of viscosity it's also it has something to do as in it also has something to do with the radius this radius or the size of the body of the solid sphere and then also the viscous drag or the force also has something to do with the velocity with which this thing is falling now we do not know we need to investigate whether these things are directly proportional or inversely proportional by investigating the indices x y and z and that is what we are going to do right now so let's find the indices of x y and z after knowing those indices we will be able to find to, to, to identify the relationship perfectly whether these things are exactly directly proportional or inversely proportional we are going to use dimensions to find these indices 
So definitely, of course, using dimensions, we have we need to find the dimensions of force that is going to be equal to uh, the dimensions of this constant k. Multiply that by the dimensions of the uh, viscosity coefficient of viscosity to the power x, and the dimensions of the radius to the power y, and the dimensions of velocity that is to the power z. Now, definitely, this is going to be the dimensions of force is uh, mass times uh, mass times acceleration. Acceleration is L T to the power negative two is going to be equal to k. Now, this constant is dimensionless. Constants do not have dimensions, so that is ignored. Uh, that is uh, multiply that by the coefficient of viscosity. We found the coefficient of viscosity earlier as m. L to the power negative 1, T to the power negative 1, and all this is to the power X. Multiply that by R. R is the length, so that is L. R is the radius to the power Y. Multiply that by V to the power Z. Now, V is velocity. Velocity is L, T to the power negative 1, and that is to the power z now i have not gone into the specifics of how we come to l to the power negative one how we come to ml negative one to negative one and how we come to all this now regarding the coefficient of viscosity i explained how we come to this in our previous sessions you just need to go to the videos in the playlist but then regarding this and that and how we come to this I have another video on how we find dimensions. I'll put the link in the description below for you. So we continue. We have to, after coming up with this, we need now to equate the corresponding indices. The corresponding indices in this case, we're going to start with M, mass. We are on the, so when you look at M, we equate the, the indices for this side and for that side. So for this side, we have M, the, inde the index here is 1. So we shall say for M, 1 on this side of the equation. Then this side of the equation, we have M here is to the power 1. 1 times X is X. So 1 is going to be equal to X, this side. And so you realize that X already is equal to 1. That is for M. Then let's get to L. So coming to L, you realize that L... Here is um, this side, L is to the power 1, so we have 1 is going to be equal to L, this side of the equation, L we have negative 1, X, so it's negative X. Then we have L to the power Y, 1 times Y is plus Y. Then we have L here is to the power 1 times Z, so plus Z. Now, of course, we are, in our first expression, we already got our value of x as 1. So if we substitute for 1 here, this is going to become 1 being equal to negative 1 plus y plus z. And then you find that um, when this comes this way, it becomes 2 is going to be equal to y plus z. This is probably our second expression this was our first expression. So that is what we come up when we do with L. As uh, Y plus Z is equal to 2. That's how L turns out. So let's compare the indices for T. If you look at T, we have T this side is negative 2. So we have negative 2 is going to be equal to T this way we have negative 1 times X, which is negative X. Then we have another T here, negative 1 times Z is minus z and then we shall end we, but, but in our first expression here we have x as 1 so we substitute for 1 here it becomes negative 2 is going to give us negative 1 minus z and this is going to become when this negative 1 comes this way it becomes negative 2 plus 1 becomes negative 1 is equal to negative z it means that uh, our value of z here is 1 so from here we have sorted that z is 1 x is also 1. So since we have x, we have z, we can go ahead and find y. So from this expression, if we substitute for z here and call this z1 right here, if we are to call um, substitute for 1 here, you realize that here 2 is going to give us a y plus z. 
which z we got as 1 here. And so you realize that our value of y here is going to be 2 minus 1, which is 1. So from our working here, as we use dimensions, we realize that the value of x is 1. The value of z is also 1, and the value of y is equal to 1. So that expression becomes uh, the viscous drag f, therefore, is going to be equal to the, di uh, the dimensionless constant times the coefficient of viscosity to the power x, which is 1, times r, whose index is 1 times v and still to the power 1 and according to experimental observations it was found that the value of k this constant is equal to 6 pi so what does that mean it means that this now becomes that f the viscous force f is going to be given by 6 pi times the coefficient of viscosity times r times v and this becomes Stokes' law. So this expression defines Stokes' law. This brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. Feel free to check out other excellent videos on the channel and don't forget to subscribe. For Ksemo Academy, this is Anwar Rangakuramia helping you manifest excellence.